Hello fellow chatterers and those who feast on books and anyone else who's curious or lost. My name is Chatty and this is my channel Chatty the Mad Chatter where I will be chatting away madly about um, the stats of the books I have read in April hoping I don't waffle because it once again it is another one shot no editing. So in April, I have read this precarious pile, which I'm going to attempt to show you. It's coming, it's coming. It, it feels very wobbly. There we go, we got it. <laughs> I've read 10 books. Um, I think it's helped that I was in two readathons and that's pushed me with these. Um, if you want more details about them and my thoughts on them, um, I have a whole uh, playlist of my weekly wrap up. So there's four videos where I go over um, the books I read in April each week. Uh, and I also talk about how I incorporated, the, incorporated them in the readathon. So if you're just interested in the book, you will need to watch half of it. So what have I been reading? I have read... Um, Part two of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. First part I read in March. And there's our first, possibly of many, uh, phone fallings because this is not very stable. Please hold. Where was I in my pile? Um, I have read... Um, Quicksand. This is the bind up by Nella Larson. Um, I've read the novel from here called Quicksand. I have read Rainbow Grey by Laura Ellen Anderson. I have read A Dark Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. Ruin of Kings by Jen Leons. Scythe by Neil Schusterman, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah Day Mass, The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Wife's Tale by Ada Edmariam, and Loud Black Girls, which is an anthology um, edited by Yomi Adagoki and Elizabeth Uwe Bienen. Apologies if any of these names I have pronounced incorrectly. Okay, so that's everything I've read. Like I said, um, do go and check out for a bit more information on the other videos. And in the links, I down below in the description, I will put the story graph links, which will give you a lot more information, other, people rev other people's reviews, and also trigger warnings as well. So you can just check out if these books are likely to be for you or not, if you like the sound of any of the titles. But this is basically me kind of doing my stats of April. So first stat is um, the sizes of books I've read. So I have three different sizes of books. Uh, no, I have more than that. I have five, but we, six, but we only did three of them this month. So um, I have my mouse size, which is um, 100, I'm sorry, I'm organising them into piles because I find it fun, but I look really distracted. Um, so mouse is 151 to 300 pages, that classifies as a mouse. Um, a cow is 301 to 500 pages, and an elephant is 501 to 700 pages. So I read three mouse books. Um, so these were all below 300 pages, but not as low as 150. I read five cow size. So these are all over 300 pages, but under 500. I did say five, didn't I? There's five. So those are my cow books. And then two elephant sized, which is over 500 pages, but under 700 because I'm not counting the full Way of Kings. Way of Kings is actually a dinosaur, <laughs> um, because it's, this version is um, a, over a thousand pages, um, and that qualifies in my book as a dinosaur. Um, but I only count the 
second part with this book, which was 524, because that's what I read in April. Okay, now I'm going to have a little look at the genres of these books. So my favourite genre is fantasy, so that does tend to be um, what I read the most of. But there are other ones I will reach out and try other books, because sometimes I feel like I have a fantasy overload, I fancy a change, and I do enjoy other genres. But I'm also really trying to, I have series planned, I have things I'm, I'm wanting to try and get through, and they do tend to be more fantasy based. So let's go straight in with the fantasy. Um, I had six fantasy reads out of the ten. Um, and of those six, so let me show you those first of all. I'm putting them in a specific order. <laughs> Here we go. Of those six, la la la. Da da. <laughs> Let's see if I can balance this. Um, these three are what I would class as epic fantasy. Um, this is this is fantasy romance. I would say this is urban fantasy, and I would say this is whimsical fantasy. So there you go, fantasy with some subgenres as well. Um, and one of these fantasy books I'm also going to put in the next category, which is classics. So I read two classics, that was Quicksand and The Two Towers. I read one dystopia, which is Scythe. And then I read two non-fiction. So this non-fiction is an anthology of essays. And this non-fiction is, um, it says, a personal history. So it's, it's like a biography slash um sort of history of a time period in Ethiopia okay so now I'm going to talk about um the age range that I read wasn't very diverse with the age range I have that noise is going to happen a lot when I keep picking these books up and I've lost yes how does that work oh yeah that I, I've worked it out now okay so I have going to move this one. I have seven adult books. Second fall. <laughs> but I don't want to redo it. So we're just we're just going to deal with the falling. Um, I've got one crossover book. So Loud Black Girls, I feel, is both YA and adult. It was in the YA section of the uh, library where I got it from um, but I would class it as adult as well um, and then I have one YA and one middle grade and then um, I've actually done quite a lot of rereading over these last few months um, because I'm wanting to reread books to get caught up with series and then to fully appreciate this series, um, I want to start at the beginning, immerse myself in it, and then move on to the books that I haven't read. Um, so I have actually got three, and they're all the chunky ones. <laughs> I have got three rereads. So I've read all of these books before, and I had a great time rereading these books this time round. Um, and enjoyed them even more, I think, this time round. Um, I don't have the clearest memories of rereading The Two Towers, just because I read it many, many years ago. Like, I was in the secondary school playground, if there is such a thing as playground in secondary school, which I don't think there is, but for all intents and purposes, secondary school playground. Uh, talking with my friend, I, I buddy read... <laughs> before I knew that was a thing. Um, these two books with my friend Becky, um, and we, we'd we loved the, the, the film, the Fellowship of the Ring film, and then we both decided we were just gonna reread, reread all of Lord of the Rings. No, reread, read Lord of the Rings. Um, and then once we finished Fellowship, we just went straight on to the next two before Two Towers came out, and pretty much binged this one, and went straight on to Return of the King, and then saw the films. So I don't have the clearest idea of what I remember being in Two Towers and what I remember being in Return of the King. 
because I was one of those people that got the extended editions of the DVDs and looked at all of the extra bits about how they made the writing decisions they did, how they chose wh which parts they were going to film where, and all of that detail. And I found it really interesting that the t they they took the timelines because not the timelines in the books don't necessarily match. So you've got two different stories following two different um, paths of the main characters that you meet in the first book. And uh, they don't kind of correspond necessarily with the books. So stuff happens in, in this book that actually links with events that are then happening in Return of the King for the other characters. So the films wanted it all to be real time. So they did change a few bits here and there. Like the soul of the story is essentially there. Um, but I just found that really interesting. So on a reread, it, it was fascinating to kind of like see what I thought of it and what I thought was going to happen in this book and then find it was actually quite different to how I remembered. So that was interesting. Gone off on a massive tangent there, but hey ho. Um, <laughs> so these ones were rereads and these seven books were all new reads for me. Um, no, oh, oh, it's going, it's going, don't you move, naughty camera, you stay right where you are. Um, so I'm now going to look at um, the diversity of my reading in terms of um, the authors writing the books and the stories they're telling. So, out of the ten books, three books I have are written by male authors. I have not read any books this month that were written by non-binary authors and these seven books were written by female authors. So very very pleased that I'm reading a lot of female authors um, but I do want to keep searching for more non-binary authors to be reading as well and make sure that their work is being represented so we'll try more next month to see if I can do that a bit better. Um, and then the final one I want to look at is um, again still looking at the at authors um, and three of the ten books I have were written um, by BIPOC authors which were yeah these three. So we've got Loud Black Girls, The Wife's Tale and um, Quicksand by Nella Larson. Uh, so three out of ten is all right. It's all right. It's not great. Um, five out of ten would be better. So again, that's sort of something I need to be sort of looking more at with the um, books that I'm buying to kind of make sure I'm keeping um, supporting authors who um, don't necessarily get published as easily as their white counterparts. So that is roughly all the stats um, that have been fun to explore. I like doing different parts of books, even though it's really awkward and I'm knocking cameras off all over the place. Um, I also like to try and choose my favourite read and my least favourite read. I can't order books. I find this really hard. So this is, this is me challenging myself to try and I'm really rubbish at doing things like one to ten and like this because I think with books, I think it really just depends on the mood you're in as to kind of what you want at that time. And um, I think you, I find it really hard to kind of compare how good this it book is compared to this one when they're very different stories and they do things very well in their own right, but they don't compare that easily. But I do love watching other people's videos where they talk about, you know, this is my least favourite to my favourite. So I'm trying. So sadly, my least favourite, it might not come as a surprise if you've been watching the weekly wrap ups. But I have started reading this book at the beginning and been pushing myself through because it, it is a challenge for me. It's my intimidating read. And that is The Wife's Tale. So it's not the type of book I usually read. It's not something I always gravitate towards. Um, the reason I have this book is because um, I subscribe to the shelter book, the shelter box 
book club. Um, so every month they'll send you a book and a certain amount of your money also goes to their charity. Um, so it's like reading books and earning money for charity, which I just think is fantastic. And I'll leave the link in the description if you want to know more about what more about what Shelterbox does and what the book club does. They also kind of really um, stretch the diversity of, of the reading. There are lots of representation of different countries, of different stories. Um, so it is it challenges me a lot. Um, and and this did this did challenge me um the i think because it is more of of a his, history it's not like historical fiction or or a memoir of of someone telling their own story which i think has more of that human connection because it kind of mixes um research that the author found with the historical context of what was happening at the time in ethiopia I found it difficult to kind of get into the story and kind of connect with it because I'm someone that really reads for emotions and this felt very dry at points. Though I had moments where I was really connected to, um, so the, it's about the author's um, grandmother. So I was really connected to the story. We, we kind of follow her from her childhood um, up until her death and there were so many moments where I'm like oh my goodness like wow having to deal with that that must have been really awful and really hard and then it just sort of like skips or, or then we'll then go from you know <laughs> her in labor having a really hard time or having a really kind of like poignant moment within her marriage or um or with her children or with um the struggles in her life that she's fighting for and then it will start talking about the, the 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 context and like what's happening in Ethiopia at the time and it's not that it's interwoven badly it, it's well written it's just that because of of who I am when I read I wanted the story to keep going because I, I read fiction the most like and this feels there's moments when you feel it's fiction and then there's moments when it's like no this is very much a, a history um so I found that difficult with the jumping around. I wanted the fiction. I wanted like the gaps to be filled in, but because it's very factual based, that wasn't what the author wanted to do. She wanted the truth. She wanted her, her grandma's story to be told and her strength and what actually happened to be told rather than her filling in the gaps with fiction. Um, so the book, the book is fine, but in terms of my reading enjoyment, I really did find this hard. Um, what helped me was that I did listen to a couple of chapters on audio whilst I still had access to that um, and that helped to pull me back into the story because um, listening to someone reading it gave me that emotion and gave me um, and pulled me into the world a lot more so that was really helpful and then when I lost my audio and, um, and carried on reading um, I could still hold those voices in my head and, and that really helped me connect to the story so I always recommend if you're struggling with something try an audiobook and it will probably help bring it to life a bit more I tend to not want to listen to audiobooks too much where books I'm really interested in because I want the control because I wasn't connecting it absolutely really helped me read this book and I am really pleased I've read it it's really given me a different insight into um, the type of life that this woman was leading in here and the things that she went through. Um, I have retained some information about the um, the growth and the political climate in Ethiopia, but I feel it is very quickly going to seep out of my head because I just don't have the ability to hold in sort of the. It wasn't accessible in because it wasn't a non-fiction, so it wasn't done in this is the title, this is what we're focusing on, this is this. It was a fictitious way of telling it and I just, I'm not going to retain that information. So very much, this book wasn't for me. I feel a big achievement from having read it. Um, I, I there, there were definitely things I enjoyed of it, but of all the books I've read, I, this was my least favourite because I found it so hard to get into. My favourite is more complicated um, because I, I enjoyed everything else I read. Obviously, the levels of enjoyment were very, very different with some of the books. Um, and, yeah, it's... <laughs> it's always... Ah! Ugh, sorry, this is just a terribly chaotic video, but we're going to go with it because 
my filming time is limited so this is the opportunity um, because otherwise I'm going to fall asleep and be talking absolute twaddle and not be able to do anything if I have to redo this whole thing and I might cry so I'm just going to go with the camera falling over and I'm sorry about that <laughs> but that's what we have so um books that I really really and I I really really did enjoy my reread of Ruin of Kings um I enjoyed it so much more than the first time I read it having a bigger affection and love for the series now I know where it's going um but I think because I know I love the second book more I know this isn't quite going to hit that top mark for me in terms of like being my favorite I loved it it was a really enjoyable read but it's it's not going to hit the favorite one so it's not going to be that one um and again the <laughs> the way of kings is my favorite fantasy series i absolutely love this book um but it's already clear that i already know i love this so it's like this is already going to count it's not like i'm trying any much harder with it this is this is always one of my favorite books ever my favorite probably my favorite fantasy series ever um so yeah i absolutely love this book it's amazing i love it um lord of the rings i did read there were some so many moments in this story that i absolutely loved i love treebeard i love all the stuff with the ents i love hobbits um i loved the the journey of frodo um i love samwise i think samwise is still my favorite um although i did enjoy all the merry and pippin with treebeard i thought it was a lot shorter than i thought anyway stop it tangents um but I think a lot of what I thought I enjoyed actually happens in Return of the King rather than in here. So there were moments where it didn't feel as fully complete in a book. As whereas like The Fellowship of the Ring, it felt very much complete in its own book, if that makes sense. Um, so although there's so much of this that I love and I love the trilogy as a whole, I don't think this is going to be the favourite. Um, and it seems... Um, yeah, so I do think that my favourites are, oh, I think there's definitely, there's a lot of this that I really enjoyed. It's a non-fiction um, and there's so much of this that I found really powerful, really moving, it really surprised me. Um, so I I really, really enjoyed lots of this. But again, fiction is the things that I enjoy reading the most. Um, so although I thought it was amazing, it's not going to hit the same points for me as fiction just because fiction is, is my favourite. Um, so this, like I said, this is a given anyway, so this is just going to be up there because it can't not be my favourite, but I'm rereading the whole series and it's just going to be so boring if like every month I'm like, oh yeah, no, the, the Stormlight Archive is my favourite. So we just know I love it, so we're not counting it. So basically I've got two, I've got my favourite and an honourable mention. So the honourable mention is Quicksand, just because... I was not expecting to love it. I was expecting to enjoy it. I was expecting to um, find it interesting to, I um, don't know what the word is, um, to definitely get more from it, um, to, to enjoy reading a different classic. But I found myself really kind of moved by it and by the main protagonist it's really not a story that I think is naturally my cup of tea, um, just because it, it, it does have a, a, a tragedy to it. It does feel tragic. Like, there's a lot of it that's empowering and there's a lot of it that's so thought-provoking. Um, but, yeah, that it, for it to give its point across as the way it does, it does come across more more tragic, which isn't... I don't usually enjoy tragic things because I don't want to feel tragic. <laughs> um, and there isn't a huge amount of, of stuff at the end to kind of like have that bit of sweetness to it. Whereas um, other books that I found emotionally moving like and really hard hitting like Beloved did. Although that is excruciating, there is hope at the end of it. Um, but this one, there was tragedy at the end of it. It wasn't as excruciating as Beloved, 
but it really moved me it really really did and I really can't do it justice or put into words um, I do have a video where I talk about this um, in a lot more detail so I'll put the link to that if you are interested in finding out more so I really need to mention just like how this has stood out to, to me and I think it will stay with me um, for quite a while as well and I'm so excited to read Passing that is the one that I've been wanting and that's the one that like brought me to um Nella Larson to my um attention that I really wanted to read um so I think I was just surprised about how much quicksand did move me but my favorite I think sorry my legs are going dead I have to move and I hope the camera doesn't die on me ah oh, phew well done <laughs> um I think my favorite just for the pure joy that it brought me and the beauty <laughs> that it gave me and the lightness that it gave my soul is Rainbow Grey. This is my favourite because I just had a wonderful time while I was reading it. It just made me feel amazing. And I loved all the pictures. I loved the characters. I loved being in the world. I loved the imagination behind the world. And I had a great time. So there we go. My favourite this month was Rainbow Grey. But I feel I needed to go through everything and explain myself to let you know that all the other books I really enjoyed. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can just wrap this up in under half an hour. So that's everything I've read in April. I'm really excited to be moving on to May. Um, I've done a video already about what I'm hoping to read in May. There is consequences for me not doing it. If you're interested to know whether or not I completed my readathons, that is all wrapped up in the um, week four wrap up the weekly wrap up for April week four um and I've already linked the playlist so I don't need to talk about that anymore thank you so much for watching if you made it this far if you got to the end of the video with the camera falling over and the tangents and the waffle um then please do do a rainbow for rainbow grey if you got to the end of this video <laughs> there's hope at the end there is hope at the end um thanks so much for watching um, if you enjoyed yourself, please do a little like. If you haven't subscribed already, this video is probably not going to convince you to do that. But I have other ones that are probably better. Uh, but if you fancy subscribing, please do um, click away. Um, it's really nice to kind of feel that I'm building. I really want to get to 100 subscribers so that I can change my, my channel bar to have um, Chatty the Mad Chat at the end, which is very exciting. Um, and I hope that you had a great reading month in April and are looking forward to reading some more books in May. Happy reading, everyone.